In our last episode, we helped Moira Brown collect the research she needed to write Chapter 1 to her Wasteland Survival Guide. Now it's time to help her with Chapter 2. When we are ready, she gives us the lowdown on the first bit of research she needs done. The second chapter is going to be a bit trickier, I think. It'll cover how to handle creatures out there, for better or worse. For example, repelling mole rats. Uh, learning about mire lurks, and when all else fails, how to handle being injured. So let's buckle down and get to work on this chapter. Mole rats can burrow into almost anything and cause a lot of trouble. So I figured I'd make a chemical repellent stick for people to shoo them off. But I need it to be tested before I put the recipe to paper in the guide. So I need you to find some mole rats and test it out a bit. Don't worry about the chemicals. I handled them all the time while experimenting, and I'm perfectly fine, aren't I? How about I let you have the leftover chems I used to make it? Heck, do a thorough job, and maybe I'll let you keep the repellent itself. It'll be easy. One tap with the applicator, and it overwhelms their senses with a sort of feel-bad sensation. Then they're gone before you know it. You could test it out on just a few mole ratties, but for real testing, try it on ten or more. There should be plenty in the tepid sewers downtown. So, we've got some sort of chemical repellent on a stick that gives mole rats a feel-bad sensation. Now remember, we want the best survival guide possible, so we need to fulfill even the optional portions of this quest. So we've got to test this chemical out on 10 mole rats. Now we can test this on any 10 mole rats. Moira suggested we go to the tepid sewers, but we don't really have to. The closest mole rats are gonna be right behind Megaton itself. Heading around to the back of the town, sure enough, we find some mole rats there, and we can try out the chemical on a stick. Well, so much for the repellent part of this chemical, but we certainly gave them a feel-bad sensation. This character is not specced into melee, so I shouldn't be able to kill these guys in two hits. But the chemical on the stick does have some sort of effect. With only two whacks from this stick, I successfully murder these little mole rats. But we have only killed two. To complete the quest, we need to kill eight more. We might as well then do as Moira suggested and head on over to the tepid sewers. We find the entrance to the tepid sewers just south of the Anchorage War Memorial. With the repellent stick in hand, we can work our way down into the depths of the sewers. And almost as soon as we turn the corner, we meet our first batch of mole rats. <laughs> Two whacks with this repellent stick does the work. We complete the quest, but we haven't completed the optional portion. Let's continue exploring the tepid sewers to find more mole rats. Turning left at this junction, we see a path leading down and a doorway to the west. Going through the western doorway, we find one mole rat in a supply room. Once he is dispatched, we can loot the supply room. We find a first aid kit and some minor loot in some boxes. Heading back the way we came, we could turn left to go downstairs or go straight. Let's continue straight for now. This brings us downstairs into what looks like a supply room of some sort. Here we find a few lockers and some boxes to loot, but no enemies and nothing of note. So heading back the way we came, we have one path left. Turning down the north staircase, we find a terminal against the wall and a raider walking in the distance. Oh great, this means the sewers are filled with raiders. So much for an easy experiment. After hacking the terminal, we find an option to deactivate the nearby turret system. Taking a look at the system information, we see that the raiders have already hacked into this turret infrastructure, creating a new user admin laden with expletives. Now that we don't have to worry about any turrets in these sewers, we can take out the raider walking down the hallway. 
Continuing down the hallway, we find a four-way junction. The right path is blocked with rubble. We'll turn left for now. Down this left path, we find another junction, but this end is blocked with rubble, and we find a terminal blocking the other side, and then the path just loops around, right back to where we were. We see a dead mole rat right next to the raider we just killed. Looks like the raiders invaded and have been killing the mole rats. I hope they left a few alive so that we have some to kill to complete our quest. Now we've found stairs leading to an upper level on either side. There's also a door against the northern wall. Let's first head through the northern door and here we find more dead mole rats. This is a disheartening sight. Had these been alive, we could have completed the quest and gone back to Moira. Against the western wall is a door that leads down to a metro tunnel. This is likely the way out, but we're not done exploring yet, so let's head back the way we came. We can then go up the stairs to explore the levels above. Heading up the leftmost staircase, we find a door at the top, and at last, some more living mole rats. Once we bludgeon them to death with our repellent on a stick, we can explore this small machine room. We find a door against the southern wall. This brings us down a staircase back to that long hallway. So this upper portion connects to the lower portion in a big loop. This leaves only one path left. Back into the machine room, we can head out the rear door to the train tracks. Crouching down and peering around the corner, we see a raider standing behind some sand barricades. Pulling out our sniper rifle, and executing this man, we learned that his name was Rock Salt. We don't find any more information about Rock Salt in this sewer. No terminals, no notes, nothing. But according to the Fallout 3 official strategy guide, Rock Salt is the leader of this band of raiders in the tepid sewers, and they live here hunting mole rats. They not only live off of mole rat meat, but they ferry the meat back to Cherry Street Metro Station, where some guy named Ryan Brigg buys all the meat that he can carry off of Rock Salt and his raider goons. We'll meet Ryan Brigg and his pet mole rat pumpkin in a future video. But for now, we need to sidestep these frag mines that Rock Salt and his raider goons have placed all over the tracks. They are around every corner. It will take a sharp eye to spy each of these and disable them before we blow off a limb. We know that Rock Salt is responsible because behind his sandbag barricade, we find a big stack of frag mines, along with an ammunition box. We also find Rock Salt's key on his corpse. Let's keep an eye out for a container that we can unlock with this key later. I just want to note that of all of the Raider Gang bosses out there, I have a slight, very small amount of respect for Rock Salt. Because most of these Raider bosses like to sit on their throne taking jet, making all of their goons go out there to guard their fortifications, but not Rock Salt. Rock Salt comes down here and guards it himself. As despicable as he may be as a raider, I have to admire his hard work. But we can't admire Rock Salt for long because soon his raider goons attack. After this raider is dead, we can loot a first aid kit and a vault tech lunchbox by another sandbag barricade, as well as a couple more ammo containers. Now, there are a few paths we can take. We'll start by exploring down the western path. Turning off our light and crouching down, we go down the hallway to find ourselves at another four-way junction. The path before us leads to the barracks. Here we can snipe off a raider. The right path is completely blocked off. Let's go down the left path. This leads us to what must have been a communications room for the raiders. Here we find a ham radio, which we can toggle on and off, and also some communications machinery, which is kicking up a terrible racket. Adjacent to this room is a machine room with what looks like a generator or a pump inside. Nothing of note here except for a copy of Dean's Electronics laying next to a toolbox. Heading back, we can go down the blocked passage only to find an opening to the right. This led to the bathrooms. So it looks like in the Capital Wastelands, at least, the Raiders have some sort of plumbing. Assuming these toilets even work. I guess we have no evidence that they do. Back down the hallway, we can finally go and explore those barracks. Looks like that Raider we killed from a distance was the only one here. Beneath his body against the western wall is a floor safe with randomized loot in it, and then we can go through and loot the myriad of foot lockers we find at the foot of these beds and on the dressers. There's an assault rifle in one of the bookshelves, and it's a great place to take a nap if we need to heal on up. Back to the train tracks, we can go north to continue exploring. Here we find more frag mines, but dog meat is a complete idiot. <laughs> Thank you.
reminded me to leave him back at Vault 101. <laughs> The end of this track is blocked by a train, and so we can turn east to go up a stairway and through an open door. And it's here we are attacked by more mole rats, which was all the mole rats we needed to complete the optional portion of Moira's quest. Now to weave our way out of the tepid sewers. Heading out the door in the back, we can go up some stairs down a hallway to find more mole rats to kill. I was bored with them at this point, so I just used my Gauss rifle to destroy them. Here here we find two ways forward. There's a door to the south, but it's completely blocked off with rubble. So I lied. There's only one way forward. Going through the eastern door, we can head up some stairs and round a corner to find more raiders. That's how it's done. What exactly happened there? <laughs> My stealth isn't that good. He should have been able to see me, but no, he was too preoccupied with dog meat to pay me any attention. But man, I took way longer to kill that guy than I should have. Standing there at point blank range and I couldn't even hit him. <sighs> Against the eastern wall, we find a locked terminal, which is used to unlock the nearby door, but we don't have to use this terminal because we found a key on Rock Salt's body. This is the Raider Supply Closet, with all sorts of containers to loot. At the bottom of one of the shelves is a grenade box filled with grenades. In a personal locker, we find some chems, caps, and a power fist. A great way to get a power fist early on if you don't do Operation Anchorage. And we can walk away with an assortment of whiskey and chems. Heading out and down the western path, we can loot the raider. Continuing forward, we find ourselves in a large machine room with a few more mole rats inside, and we exit by going through an eastern hallway. Here we find two paths. We'll start by going down. This leads us to another machine room with more dead mole rats. Here we find a door on the southern wall, which leads us to a supply room. Here we can stock up on scrap metal and other junk. And in the western room, we find a bottle cap mine on a workbench. That must mean that up was the way out. So heading back out of this supply room, we can go up the northern staircase, which leads us to a ruined metro station. One of the nicest touches are all of these pre-war signs and posters hanging on the walls. Here's one advertising the local museum of technology, which we'll be able to explore. There's a sign advertising Radiation King radios and television. We see this sign even in Fallout 4. These signs are backlit, and even with my torch off, the glare was so bright that it was hard to read them. The other sign I found was advertising a Super Duper Mart. To exit, we leave out the Northern Gate. This brings us to Georgetown. As soon as we arrive, we get attacked by Talon Company. <laughs> <laughs> Gone blasted talent company mercs. The mercs must have been in a firefight with some super mutants because as soon as we kill the mercenaries, we have to destroy the nearby super mutants hiding in the ruined buildings. <laughs> Once the insane firefight is over, we can, if we want, explore Georgetown, but this is such an interesting place that I believe it deserves its own video, so we'll save this for later. Heading back to Moira at Craterside Supply, we can tell her all about our experiment. Oh, I can't wait to hear how the repellent's working. Hey, how's the book coming? Oh, I'm writing up the second chapter right now. It's called Thrive. It covers the various ways to get ahead and stay ahead of the various predators out there. And how to patch yourself up if you don't. I'm not so sure about testing this stuff. Oh, it's perfectly fine and made from organic ingredients. Well, it affects things, organs, that's close enough to being organic, right? Either way, it's perfectly safe. Heck, once it got into food for Jericho, and he never even knew. 
Now we discovered that this mole rat repellent does not actually repel the mole rats. Instead, it makes whatever weapon we attach it to much more deadly against them. Now we can lie to her and say, hey, I tested it out and it worked just fine. Excellent. Finally, mankind will have a way to shoo away those annoying pests without resorting to cruelty or violence. I'll just take that back for my final studies. Oh, but here, I've got lots of leftover chems from the testing. Maybe some of them are your style? We lose karma here because remember, we're trying to create a survival guide that's going to help people navigate the wasteland. If we fill this guide with lies, it's going to lead to people dying. We also get worse rewards if we take the easy way out and lie to finish these quests early. So we'll not choose this option and instead we'll go back and tell her that we tested the mole rat repellent extensively. Oh, excellent! Substantial field testing, precise reports, and such dedication. Oh, what more could I ask for in a research assistant? So, how did my chemical repellent work? Safe and clean like a charm, I'll bet. And it's here we have to break the news to Moira in one of three ways. There's the regular option, which leads to a standard book, the sly slash sarcastic option, which leads to a sly book, or we can choose a response that reflects one of our higher special stats. Our choices here affect the final perk we get for completing all of these quests, which I covered in my first video on the topic. I'll show you the intelligence tree, which gives us a final perk that helps our medicine and science skills. We can respond by saying, it appears that mole rats have a most fatal allergy to it. Explosively so. Those poor little mole ratties. Oh, I wonder if I could make a hypoallergenic version. Oh, but that'd hardly be effective. I should mention that. Proper handling of mole rats could be important if they could be domesticated. Milked, maybe? Oh, anyway, keep the repellent. If we choose the sly option, we say, it's like explosive whack-a-mole, rat. Can I get it in bullet form for people? It's horrible. You're horrible. Oh, this thing is horrible. Everything's horrible. Oh. With that much testing, I guess it's beyond correction. Oh, go ahead and keep it. Maybe you can find a nicer use for it, but I doubt it. Poor Moira. She just has such tender sensibilities. If we choose the normal response, we say, Sorry, Moira, but your repellent is fatal to mole rats. Oh, that's... that's really a shame. Poor little mole ratties. No matter how we respond, we receive our reward for finishing this first part, and we can move on to the rest of the second chapter. There's a lot we don't know about Mirelurks and how intelligent and dangerous they are. That definitely deserves research. I hesitate to ask, but I'll need to examine the effects of serious physical trauma. I wouldn't ask if I couldn't fix you up afterwards, of course. And that should be it for the second chapter. Which do you want to check out? Well, let's start with the Mirelurks. Moira, what's this about studying Mirelurks? Mire lurks are a big threat in some areas, and knowing more about them can help people learn to avoid or even outsmart them. So I picked up this observer device to study them in their natural habitat. I need you to hide one in one of the spawning pods in their lairs. Sneaking into a mire lurk lair? The pay had better be worth it. While you're working on that, I'll be following up on a lead I've got for a couple stealth boys. When you're done, they're yours. And who knows, maybe we'll learn something useful from the Mire Lurks. So Stealth Boys after I complete the stealth operation where I would need them? Thanks, Moira, you're a gem. That's great. I recommend the nest at the Anchorage War Memorial. I knew a trader who talked about the Mire Lurks down there. Just go inside and find one of their spawning pods, probably down near the water. Put this observer inside and get out quietly. And be sure not to kill any Mire Lurks inside their nest. If you do, it could ruin the validity of the study. All right, Moira, sounds good. But I've been thinking about this guide. Can I ask you something? Absolutely. I'll bet you haven't been thinking about the guide as much as I have. Why do you really want to write this guide? Well, it'll help humanity rebuild, right? I mean, who doesn't want to help humanity? 
Besides, it's bound to work out better than some of my other projects. I mean, with you helping and all, how could it go wrong? What do you mean about your other projects? Have there been problems? Well, a little before you first arrived, one of my experiments had a little... accident. I mean, how could I have predicted the centaur would think my assistant smelled tasty? But nothing bad like that could happen with this book. It's a great plan, and it'll make up for everything else. Well, it's a big undertaking, and we've got to make sure we do it right. Oh, believe me. I know. I've been a bit careless with other projects, but this... This is important. This means something. Anyway, we can respond here to pass a speech check to convince her not to write the guide. With this outcome, we end the quest. We can no longer make the Wasteland Survival Guide, and we get the Dream Crusher perk, which I explored in my first video on the topic. But we don't want to do that, so instead we'll say, Okay, but it could be bad if the book is misleading. People could get hurt. Oh, I hadn't really thought about it like that. I don't want anyone to get hurt. That's the last thing the guide should do. Well, we're just going to have to make sure it's accurate and useful and great then. You and me. Together, we can research and write a masterpiece. I think you're right, Moira. Now let's get back to work on this book. You got it, super research assistant. Hey, I should get you a costume or something. But about the Mirelurks, I find this whole Mirelurk intelligence thing a bit hard to swallow. There's only one way to know for sure. Just slip the observer into a spawning pot at the War Memorial. I'll take care of the rest. This quest sends us to the Anchorage War Memorial, which is right next to the tepid sewers we just explored. And the optional part of this quest is to not kill any Mirelurks, which is a bit tricky. If you want to clear the Anchorage War Memorial and kill all the Mirelurks for the experience, I recommend that you clear the place while doing the mole rat portion of this quest at the tepid sewers. That way the Mirelurks are all dead before we get the quest, to go to the memorial. Not only are we going to be able to sneak in easier with no Mirelurks alive, but we save a trip having to come back here after the quest is done to clear the memorial. At any rate, the inside of the War Memorial is sprawling. So sprawling that I already published a dedicated video to this War Memorial. If interested, you can find that video here. I spent a long time in the upper portions of the facility sneaking around trying to find some way to get down and plant this thing in one of those egg pods, and it's just too much hassle. The quick and smart way to go about this is to enter the memorial through the service entrance. Here all we have to do is bypass an easy locked door. Once in the service entrance we see a dead wastelander and some Mirelurks walking around the tunnels. With my Chinese stealth armor equipped, and moving extremely slow to avoid detection, I was able to sneak past the Mirelurks and deposit the Observer in one of their spawning balls. And that's it! Once done, we can leave the memorial and go back to Moira to tell her of our success. So, are they intelligent? Do they have a leader? Some sort of king? Or priests? Or some sort of scaly community center? Moira, why do we even care if they're intelligent? They still try to kill me. Okay, yes, they're jerks. But if they're intelligent, we can get them to stop and and train them. Oh, maybe we could even ride them. Oh, that'd be fun. Oh, Moira, you're just a gem. Well, I slipped the observer in with the eggs, and they are none the wiser. I'll bet most people would have just gone in there, guns blazing without half a thought. But not you. You're the best research assistant ever. I've been getting a good signal, but what do you think about them from your first-hand observations of them? Like with the other task, we have a number of ways to respond. We'll first pass the intelligence check to say, They descended from local crabs. I'd call them Sila Serata Horrendous. That's very scientific of you. Personally, I wasn't sure if they were crabs or if they came from some sort of brine shrimp perhaps. Some of these observations about their armor and camouflage gave me an idea for reinforced neutral colored headgear. Here, consider it thanks for not interfering with them. Oh, speaking of which, take these so you can continue to avoid them in the future. She gives us four stealth boys 
and a shady hat. But let's explore the other speech options first. We can answer with a sarcastic lie and say, they've got a little bubbling castle and they spend all day circling it. Really? Are you kidding me? No, really, are you? Huh? Guess I'll have to wait and see what I get from the observer. Awkward silence. <clears throat> Some of these observations about their armor and camouflage gave me an idea for reinforced neutral colored headgear. And it continues on the same way from there. The final and standard response is to say they're definitely vicious and highly territorial. Oh, that's unpleasant. But I guess it's no surprise. Practically everything out there can eat us. This bottom of the food chain thing really sucks. Once done, we can move on to the final task to finish off Chapter 2 of the guide. Great! I never get to study anyone who's severely injured. Not without them crying to be fixed right away or trying to bleed out and all that. But obviously, you can handle a lot of abuse. So if I'm ever going to find a good example of human anatomy and injury resistance, it'd be you. Next time you get badly injured, return here so I can examine you before I heal you up. I mean, you're going to get yourself hurt anyway, right? What could possibly be worth breaking my bones over, Moira? Did you know when bones break and reheal, they grow back tougher? In a way, you'd be repaying yourself. Once I make sure you survive, of course. But in a more tangible way, I can give you a modified environmental suit of mine. How's that sound? An environmental suit does sound interesting. All right. I guess I'll get hurt eventually. Might as well come here when I do. Wow, what a great research assistant you are. I mean, really, that's dedication. Demonstrating how to withstand pain by getting injured? Wow. When you're ready, come back here with some serious injuries. Maybe a crippled limb or two. And I'll take notes and fix you up. I'll be waiting here with plenty of bandages for you. So don't worry. Just go get horribly injured. Oh, and be careful. Uh-huh, you yeah, be careful. Huh, thanks, Moira. Why not study injuries on yourself? If it'd help, I could shoot you in the gut. Well, I could hardly be an impartial observer in that case, now could I? It ruined the validity of the entire experiment. Besides, you wouldn't shoot me now, w would you? Hmm, how about I just leave you alone for a bit? <laughs> how about you do, Moira? How about you do? You seriously want me to go out of my way to hurt myself for your book? Oh, don't think of it as crippling yourself for me. Think of it as getting free treatment when you eventually end up getting yourself hurt. Well, there's nothing for it. We've got to go get ourselves injured. We could do this the natural way and just play the game as we normally would and wait until we get injured. But I wanted to complete this quest as quickly as possible, so I stripped naked, went outside Megaton with a frag mine in hand, and laid it on the ground. But uh, apparently, you can't trigger your own frag mines. Thankfully, it was about then that an ant showed up. Bingo! Crippled limb! Well, I completed the optional portion of the quest, but I still have to go and get my health below 50%. Have you ever tried to go and get yourself severely wounded around Megaton? It was during this experience when I realized exactly how peaceful the area around Megaton is. Aside from the mole rats behind the city, which we already killed, I walked and walked and walked trying to find someone, anyone, to do damage to me. I walked all the way to downtown DC without finding any creatures, not even a soul, before I finally found some raiders in the ruins. I killed one and then just sat there until I fulfilled the requirements of the quest. Die! 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 And there we go. Then I could put my armor back on and kill this doggone blasted raider. I was so injured that I was woozy, with a crippled limb and a crippled head. I fast traveled back to Megaton and I could barely see the world spawn around me. But I managed to drag my injured frame back to Moira so that she could help me. Well, how do you feel? Moira, this really hurts, you know. Oh, I know it does, dear, but it's for a good cause. Uh, try not to squirm so much while I take notes. Now, how would you describe the pain you're feeling? 
any advice for how to keep it from being overwhelming? And remember, this is for posterity. Again, we get our three options. Passing the intelligence check, we can say, Pain is an abstract. I stay focused on the definable things like survival. That's a very enlightened attitude you've got. Shame it doesn't stop bullets, huh? Luckily, I'm here to patch you up. Now hold still and quit fidgeting. Ugh, how can you be walking around like this? Okay, I even stitched a little smiley face in you to keep up your spirits. It's kind of hard to see from your side, though. Here, take this environment suit of mine. It will help with medical tasks, and it should help prevent the effects of exposure, too. We're rewarded with an environmental suit and some medics. But let's go back and see what those other two options were. We can choose the sarcastic option to say, My only solace is thinking about inflicting this pain on people like you. Oh, well, aren't you a grouchy one today? What got you in such a bad mood? Oh, yeah, the massive physical trauma. Luckily, I'm here to patch you up. Now, hold... Oh, Still, go quit fidgeting. Or we can choose the standard response and say, The adrenaline helps. So does the fear of death. There's a lot of both. Ah, yes. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. And it does help when you're sewing up wounds and setting bones, too. That seems like it'd be tough to do alone. Luckily, I'm here to patch you up. Now hold still and quit fidgeting. Well, Moira, now that you're done poking and prodding my fragile body, I suppose... Pose, this completes the second chapter of your research, right? Correct as always. And your feedbacks really led to a very smartly written book. Maybe too smart for some folks, I worry. Of course, if the reader can't be bothered to understand something important as a book on how to stay alive, <laughs> then what can we do, huh? And in case those readers blame you for their ignorance, here's your payment. Two big boxes of ammo. Now, on to the next chapter. We get some ammunition, and with that, we complete the second chapter of Moira's Wasteland Survival Guide. But we'll save chapter three for another day. Instead, let's go over all the loot we got. First, we've got this environmental suit. This gives us plus 30 to radiation resistance and gives us plus five to the medicine skill. It looks like a big yellow hazmat suit. This is the same suit, that we got in Fallout New Vegas while doing the quests inside Camp Searchlight. It's a great little item. The winterized T-51B power armor gives us 25 radiation resistance, so the environmental suit is five better than the power armor. Still, I don't know if I would ever take the time to swap out of my power armor to wear the environmental suit just for an additional five radiation resistance. But it does have that boost to medicine, so I'll keep it on hand just in case. The next item is the shady hat, which grants us plus five to sneak and and gives us plus one perception. It's a nice little fedora that looks handsome, but it does go on your head. And I was curious, I've already got the Chinese stealth armor, which comes with a helmet. The Chinese stealth armor gives us plus 15 to sneak. So if they stacked, that would give us plus 20 to sneak, which is pretty doggone great. I tried on the stealth armor and to my surprise, they did indeed stack. It looks funny though. It <laughs> looks like I'm wearing a wetsuit while wearing a fedora, which is ridiculous. Part of me thought that maybe I had a mod conflict installed that allowed me to wear both, but after doing some research, no, that's not true. The base vanilla game of Fallout 3 allows you to wear both the shady hat and the Chinese stealth armor simultaneously. It's not a mod conflict. It may have been unintentional, I'm not sure, but it is in the vanilla game. The other item of note is the repellent stick, which we got to keep after killing all of those mole rats. It's just a big honking stick with a bunch of neon green slime stuck to the end. The Fallout 3 survival guide says that it's a one-hit kill for all mole rats but you saw from my experimentation here in this video that it actually takes me two hits from this stick to kill all mole rats. It has really low base damage, so this probably won't be staying in my inventory. It's more of a gimmick than anything useful. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes Chapter 2 of Moira Brown's Wasteland Survival Guide. But never fear, we've got many more chapters to go. While writing this guide, we will explore many interesting locations in Fallout 3, so if you want to make sure that you don't 
miss my videos on them, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. What are your thoughts on my Fallout 3 videos so far? Do you have any requests? Let me know what you would like me to produce content on in the description below. I read all of your comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I've got a t-shirt shop, folks. If you'd like to buy an Oxhorn or a Fallout-themed shirt, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers get access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more importantly, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.